We are nearing the end of this chapter, just a little left, bear with me. Move the map to source call inside our node editor class into our properties editor class. So move it here into the select set selection method. And now we wish to show the light editor for a light selection, the camera editor for a camera selection, and the transform editor for a transform selection. So we need the type info. Again, since we have the source QModel index, by mapping it, we can actually call internal pointer, which is our node. And then, if it's not none, we can ask for the type info. So, node is current internal pointer. If node is not none, type info is node type info. And then depending on the type info, we can show our editors like so. If type info is camera, we show the camera editor. If it's light, we show the light editor. Wait, camera, light. Yeah, it's, tr it's right. It's correct. Sorry. And if we, if it's transform, we show the transform editor. If it's none of those three, we show nothing. And we never touch the node editor because it's gonna be always visible. And in the end, we set the selection as usual, which is now our source. If we run this, we should actually have it working. But there's one thing that disturbs me, it's the popping of the editor. It works nice, but I just don't like that it keeps popping up and down depending on the size of the properties editor. So let's add a scroll layout in the Qt Designer. To do that, we just find the scroll area widget, drag and drop, and then we take our group box and drag inside the scroll area. Select the scroll area, scroll down to the QFrame properties, and then change style style panel to no frame, and then line width to zero, and lay this out in a vertical layout. Select the vertical layout now, which is this object, scroll area widget contents 2, and change the margins to 0, so we get the same offset as before. Save it and run it again to test it. And if we would make this smaller, we get our scroll bar which is exactly what we were looking for. Awesome. Go to our models data method. We need to get the right properties for each object depending on its type. Column 0 and 1 are, is already occupied by the name and the type info. So we need to start at 2. First we need to get the type info which I've already done here. And I switched it out also. And then we need to check the type info. If type info is camera, then we wish to return an attribute. But we, but I but I also mentioned that column zero and one is occupied, so we have to use column two. And if it's column two, we're going to use the first attribute, which is motion blur. So return node motion blur and if the index is column is at column 3 we're gonna return node shake intensity so the camera nodes data logic is done I already fixed the rest so I'm just gonna paste it and then you can see the code if type info is light if we are at column 2 we return the light intensity to column 3 for near range, column 4 for far range, and column 5 for cast shadows. And for the transform, 2, 3, and 4 corresponds to X, Y, and Z. So the data method is done. Now we need to fix the set data method. We might want to copy these because it's going to speed up our work. First of all, move this down here. And then paste the code we just copied and remove the contents 
or actually let's not remove the context let's just remove the return value return keyword once we remove those we can just add set at the beginning and then change the name with a capital letter so set capital letter shake set capital letter light set near range set far range and set cost shadows and then we have set x set y whoops and set z and then we need to set the value we actually receive and also tab this in like so set value 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 so many values whoops wrong should be set x set y and set z and then finally we emit data change so if nothing went wrong this should actually work let's run it select the transform change x to 5 y to 10 whoops and z to 25 select something else alright I can see that the values still are still there but for some reason it doesn't update when we switch selection oh yeah how stupid I am we haven't implemented the editors yet lol let's do that quickly um, our editors need a set model and a set selection call this is gonna be a copy pasting you might want to do this in a separate class and then derive from it again but I'm gonna do it this way we don't need to add mapping to UI name and UI type we're gonna add to this is the light editor so we're gonna start at 2 we need 4 mappings 4 and 5 the names of the UIs were mm, let's see light properties they were UI light intensity, UI near, UI far and UI shadows so UI light intensity UI near UI far and UI shadows the selection is going to do the same thing as before let's copy this and or all of this paste it for the camera and the camera has two properties those are let's see what the names of the UIs are camera properties it's UI motion blur and UI shake intensity so UI motion blur UI shake intensity there's not much to do anymore after that so let's just copy it one last time and paste it for the transform editor this one has three attribute so it's going to be UI X UI Y and UI Z if I remember correctly let's just check it for safety transform yep it was UI X Y and Z and finally we have to set the models for those we actually commented it out here and also we have to set the selections so let's run this and try again select A change the position to 10 15 and 25 no error so far switch the object 0 switch back 10 15 25 it works awesome we have implemented it select the light remember the default values 1 40 80 and then enabled it works same for the camera motion blur is enabled and shake intensity is at 50 we can increment the shake intensity to something else switch to the other camera and switch back we see that the value is still there make it false switch to a light make the zero go to a camera it's at false and 68 still and it's at zero when we switch back to the light so our tutorial is done 
quite a long tutorial, but I guess it was well worth it. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Stay tuned for more model via programming tutorials for PyQt. I haven't decided what the next tutorial will be about. It might be about serializing our tree views data into an XML file and then reading it back. Or I might choose to cover the QItemDelegate class. Anyhow, see you next time. Best regards and happy coding.